88 plus. Hello? Call super 2848. That is all. New post-war old Dutch cleanser, famous for chasing dirt, presents... Nick Carter, famous for chasing crime. Each week at this time, two great names are joined as new post-war old Dutch cleanser brings you one of the most resourceful and daring characters in all detective fiction. Nick Carter, master detective. Nick, I just don't like tramping around in an old cemetery in the middle of the... Oh. Careful, Betsy. Oh. Smaller gravestones are hard to see. You're telling me. I almost broke my neck on... Betsy, look. That headstone there. What about it, Nick? Well, don't you see the name on it? Yes. But so what, Nick? This grave holds the key to the whole mystery. Now, the case of the graveyard gunman. Today's exciting adventure starring Lon Clark as Nick Carter, brought to you by new post-war Old Dutch Cleanser. As our story opens, the somnolent quiet of Patsy Bowen's room is suddenly broken by the harsh, urgent jangling of a telephone. Mm. Oh. Hello? Hello, Patsy. This is Nick. Nick. Oh, Nick, it's two o'clock in the morning. Where are you? Down at the Homicide Bureau. In Matty's office. Well, what's happened, Nate? You remember Nate Benedict? The guy who stole the Felix Garth jewels? Nate Benedict? Why, of course. You helped send him up about three years ago. That's right. Well, he escaped from the pen about 10 o'clock last night. Escaped? Yes. I'll pick you up in 20 minutes, Patsy. I put Benedict in prison, and I'm going to see that he goes back. <laughs> going to do at the office, Nick? There are a couple of things I want to check up on. The name and address of Nate Benedict's girlfriend, for one. Well, I remember her name. It was Kay Florian. Why, yes, that's it. You think Benedict will try to contact her? He might. One thing we can be sure of, he'll go after the $50,000 worth of jewels he hid somewhere. Mm, yes, I wonder where he hid them. You're not the only one who wonders, Patsy. When Benedict refused to talk, the insurance company had to pay off. Felix Garth collected the full 50000 hmm. Well, here we are. Hmm. I've got my key right here, Nick. Oh, thanks. Oh, I'm still sleepy. <laughs> mm. oh. oh, snap on the lights, will you? I've got them. Great Scott. The place is a shambles. Oh, Nick, there's been a fight in here. It certainly looks that way. And get a load of that filing cabinet. Oh. Somebody's forced it open. Let's have a look at my office. Right. Nick, your office has been ransacked, too. Well, someone must have... <gasps> Nick, look. Over there by your desk, there's a man lying on the floor. Turn on the lights. Who is it? Wait till I turn him over. <laughs> oh. Well, I don't know who he is, Patsy. And there's no use asking him. He's been murdered. on the phone, Nick. He'll be right over. Oh, thanks, Betsy. Did you find anything on the body to identify him? Just this slip of paper in his pocket with an address on it. Nine, 1019. 1019 Willow Hill Drive. Uh-huh. What do you suppose he was after, Nick? Whatever it was, it was important enough for someone to follow him here and take it away from him. After he put up a fight. Exactly. My guess is that whoever killed him didn't mean to do it here in the office. But when the fight started, there wasn't any choice. Nick... Maybe we can find out what they wanted if we check our cross files against the files in the drawer that was forced open. That'll tell us if a file folder is missing. Ah, oh, that's my girl. Good idea, Patsy. <laughs> I'll read the names on the cross file and you check them against the folders in the drawer. Good. You ready? Uh-huh. Adams, Albright, uh-huh. Anderson, uh-huh. Applegate, uh-huh. Babcock, Bannister, Barton, Benedict. Oh, uh, hold it, Nick. Yeah? That's it. The file on Nate Benedict is missing. And five hours ago, Benedict escaped from prison. That's no coincidence, Patsy. But but why would he want our file card in his own case? Why would anyone want it? The answer to that is somewhere on this cross-file card. You mean because it contains all the information we had on the original card? The one that's missing? Yes. 
He has everything, down to Benedict's family name. His family name? Yes, he changed his name years ago. His father's name was Benedetto. Oh. According to the cards... Hey, wait. Well, that's strange. What, Nick? The address written on that slip of paper I found on the dead man was 1019 Willow Hill Drive. You know whose address that is? No, whose? Felix Garth. Felix... The man Benedict stole the jewels from? The very same. <gasps> Patsy, as soon as Maddie gets here to take over, we're going to pay a call on Mr. Felix Garth. Uh, sit down, Mr. Carter. Miss Bowen. Thank you. Sorry to break in on you at this hour, Mr. Garth, but... Oh, uh... not at all, Mr. Carter. As a matter of fact, I just heard of Nate Benedict's escape and was about to call you. Call me? Why? About a visitor I had yesterday. Who was he, Mr. Garth? Well, he wouldn't give me his name, but he said he could find out where Benedict had hidden my jewels. That's so? Yes. And he offered to get them for me if I'd pay him $5,000. And you agree? Why not? The insurance company is offering a reward of $5,000 for the jewels. What did this man look like, Mr. Garth? Oh, he was rather a nondescript character, small, sandy hair... Wore a gray pinstripe suit. Nick. Mr. Garth, less than an hour ago, we found that man in my office. Murdered. Murdered? Good heavens. Oh, excuse me. Hello. Uh, this is Sergeant Matheson of the Homicide Bureau. Is Nick Carter there? Uh, yes, just a moment. Uh, for you, Mr. Carter. Oh, thanks. Hello? It's Matty, Nick. We've identified the guy you found in your office. Who was he? His name was Sammy Gates. Got out of the pen on parole last week. What? And that ain't all, Nick. The whole time Sammy was in the can, his cellmate was our old pal, Nate Benedict. Is Maddie going to meet us at the Melbourne Arms Apartments, Nick? He said he'd be waiting out in front. Uh Uh-huh. He wants to be there when we question Benedict's girl, Kay Florian. What does he expect to find out? I don't know, Patsy. As far as I'm concerned, the only question I want answered is... What was on that file card that would have told Sammy Gates where the Felix Garth jewels are hidden? You're sure that was why Gates was after the file? Well, that's the only way it adds up. Gates was Benedict's cellmate in prison. Yeah. Evidently, he learned enough from Benedict to know he could locate the jewels from something in our file. And he tried to do it, but Benedict broke prison, found Gates, trailed him to our office, and surprised him there. Then there was a fight and Gates was killed. It's the way it looks at the moment, Patsy. <sighs> well, here's the Melbourne Arms, Nick. Oh, there's Maddie waiting for us. Good. Hello, Sergeant. Oh, hello, Patsy. Oh, hiya, Nick. What's the word, Maddie? Should we go in and talk to Kay Florian? Yeah. I've been casing the joint a little. Her apartment's on the first floor, right around the corner from the desk. Uh, this way, follow me. Uh-huh. I take it you've had someone watching her. Oh, sure. I planted a man out here as soon as I heard Benedict escape. But the dame hasn't budged from her room. Oh, here we are. Apartment 101. I'll knock. Here, wait. Wait, Mary, listen. What? I tell you, I can't see you. It's too dangerous. She's talking to someone on the phone. No. No, I tell you, the police are watching me. Mary. Yeah, Nick. Get out to the desk in the lobby and get that call traced. Hurry before she hangs up. Okay, Nick. Listen, I'm not trying to avoid you, but you can't come here. Maybe I can meet you somewhere later. You think she's talking to Benedict, Nick? Sounds like it. Yes, I understand. All right, I'll call you later. Yes, yes, goodbye. She's hung up, Nick. I hope Maddie had time to have a call traced. Come on. Yeah. The desk is right around here to the left. Keep your fingers crossed. That call could lead us to Benedict. Mm. Oh, there's the sergeant. Any luck, Maddie? Yeah, Nick. The operator traced the call. Yeah? It came from the caretaker's cottage out at Wildwood Cemetery. Wildwood Cemetery? Yeah. That's where Nick caught up with Benedict when he arrested him. Right, Nick? That was the place, all right. We fought it out with him out there. That's why the newspapers called him the graveyard gunman. Then he must be there again, Nick. Well, we'll soon find out. Maddie, I suggest you call headquarters. Get as many men as you can spare out to Wildwood immediately. Right, Nick. I'll have the cemetery completely surrounded in five minutes. Operator. Operator, operator. Hey, get me police headquarters and step on it. Hello, headquarters. This is Sergeant Matheson. I want to... What? What? What is it, Maddie? Yeah. Yeah, I got it. Okay, I'll be right in. Well, what do you know about that? 
What's happened, Matty? The state police cornered Nate Benedict a half hour ago. There was what? a gun battle, and Benedict was killed. Killed? Well, where did they find him? That's what's the screwy, Nick. He was only five miles from the penitentiary when he was trapped. He never got any farther. Only five miles? But, well, that means he hasn't even been in town. Right, Patsy. And that means that our theory is blown up in our faces. Nate Benedict couldn't have murdered Sammy Gates. <laughs> Momentarily stunned by the unexpected news of Nate Benedict's death, Nick realized that what seemed to be an open and shut case has suddenly developed into a deep mystery and that he's dealing with a daring and desperate murderer. We'll see what happens in just a moment. Now, back to the case of the Graveyard Gunman. Today's adventure with Nick Carter, brought to you by new post-war Old Dutch Cleanser. As we pick up our story, Nick, Patsy, and Matty have returned to Nick's office following the news of Nate Benedict's death, a death that has turned the murder of Sammy Gates from what appeared to be a clear-cut case into a perplexing mystery. Well, with Benedict dead, I admit I'm stymied, Nick. Where do we go from here? There's only one other lead, Matty. Yeah, what's that, Nick? The fact that I first arrested Benedict out in Wildwood Cemetery... And that tonight his girlfriend, Kay Florian, got a phone call from out there. Oh, we thought the call came from Benedict. Sure, but now we know it couldn't have. Right, so who was it that called? Well, the sergeant traced the call to the caretaker's cottage. Then wouldn't the caretaker be worth talking to? Oh, come on. Oh, Nick, we're not going out to Wildwood Cemetery. Why not? Everything else in this case has turned out to be a dead end. So why not try cemetery? <laughs> Gosh, Nick, I just don't like tramping around in a graveyard in the middle of the night. Yeah, and what's it getting us? The caretaker isn't home, his cottage is dark, so why don't we blow? Because he may be back at any minute, Maddie, and I think it's worth hanging around for a while. Here, let's go this way. Oh, but Nick... Oh. Be careful, Patsy. Oh. It's really hard to see those smaller gravestones. Oh, you're telling me I almost broke my neck. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. What's the matter, Nick? Nick, what is it? What are you looking at? The headstone there, the one my flash is on. You see what I see? Just another headstone as far as I'm concerned. Look at the name. Joseph what? Benedetto. Benedetto! Nick, that was the name on the cross file card. What are you talking about? Matty Joseph Benedetto, the man who's buried here, was Nate Benedict's father. Yes, a... Well, I'll be a monkey's uncle. And hey, huh? look here. Behind the headstone. Hey, fresh dirt. Somebody's been doing some digging here lately. Unless I miss my guests, what they got out of that hole was Felix Garth's jewels. Of course. That's what Sammy Gates was after in our files. Nate Benedict's family name. Right. Gates must have known that I arrested Benedict out here in this cemetery. Uh Uh-huh. And apparently he'd wormed the information out of Benedict somehow that the jewels were buried behind his father's tombstone. Which means that to find the jewels, all he had to do was to find out the right name of Benedict's father. But, Nick, that means that someone besides Benedict knew the jewels were buried here. Sure. And whoever that someone is followed Gates to your office and killed him to keep him from finding out the name on this gravestone. You may be right, Matty. You bet I'm right. And I'll lay you odds I know who it was. Kay Florian's the only one it could have been. Kay Florian? Sure, she was Nate's girlfriend. What? She's the only one... Well, oh, get down, hey, Bobby, hit the ground. Stay behind the stone. They're shooting at us. Oh, yeah? Well, two can play that game. Shots were from behind those bushes over there, Matty. Right. I'll smoke them out. Hold it, Matty. Whoever it was, I think you've scared him away. Oh, Nick. You all right, Patsy? As soon as I get my heart out of my throat, I will be. Well, looks like we've got another graveyard gunman on our hands, Nick. Come on, let's take a look at those bushes. Oh, careful, Nick. Ah, here. This is the spot. Right here. Uh, No one's here now. Oh, Nick! What is it? What is it? There's a man... Standing right over there. And, uh, stay where you are. All of you, don't move. He's got a gun, Nick. What do you do here? Why do you do all the shooting? Maybe you could answer that question, brother. Put on that gun, pal. You're talking to the police. Police? Yeah, yeah. Who are you? My name is Otto. I am caretaker of cemetery. So you're the caretaker, huh? Yeah. I come home. I hear shooting. I run out here. And, of course, you didn't do the shooting yourself. No, no, no. no. I shoot no one. Uh, I... All right, all right. Take it easy, Otto. You made a telephone call a couple of hours ago, I believe. Called Miss Kay Florian at the Melbourne Arms Apartments. Why? No, I, I no call no we one. We traced the phone call to your cottage. 
Wanted to see her, but she wouldn't let you come to her apartment. No, on my word of honor. Okay, I... if he won't talk, we'll have to run him in. Come on, Otto. You're going down to headquarters. No, no, no. Wait, I... I talk. Ah. I, I tell you everything. That's better. You did call Miss Florian, right? Yeah. What about? About the jewels. The Felix Garth jewels? Yeah, that's them. Miss Florian has them. Uh Uh-huh. What did I tell you, Nick? Go on, Otto. How do you know she has them? Last night, she come here. She dig them up. I see her do it. I didn't know who she was. I go to Benedict trial three years ago. I see her. So after you saw her dig up the jewels, you called her and demanded money to keep quiet about the fact that she had them. Is that it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. You think he's telling the truth, Nick? Well, there's one way to find out, Patsy. How's that, Sergeant? By talking to Kay Florian like I wanted to do in the first place. Well, that's what we've got to do, Matty. All right, then. What are we waiting for? Let's go see the Florian dame. For my dough, she's got a murder to explain. There's one thing you're overlooking, Matty. Oh, yeah? What's that? According to Otto, the Florian woman dug up the jewels last night. So? What time was it, Otto? About 10 o'clock. In other words, Matty, before Sammy Gates was killed. She already had the jewels. What difference did it make to her whether Sammy found out where they were buried? Nick's got a point, Sergeant. No, I don't see it. If Gates hadn't found the jewels behind this gravestone, he'd have gone after the Florian babe. So she bumped him off, not only to protect the jewels, but to keep Gates from bumping her off. It all adds up, don't it? Maybe, Maddie. Maybe not. We'll know after we hear her story. Let's go. Come on, come on, sister. Come on, talk. I'm telling you, I got nothing to talk about. We know you have the Garth jewels, Miss Florian. Where are they? I never heard of them. You dug up the jewels from behind a gravestone in Wildwood Cemetery between 9 and 10 o'clock last night. Who says so? Otto says so. He told us his story, Miss Florian. How he tried to shake you down for some money to keep it quiet that you have the jewels. Why, that dirty little double-crossing All right, all right. Will you talk now, sister? Not much point in keeping quiet now, is there? Okay, okay, you win. I'll talk, but plenty. More than you're bargaining for. What do you mean? I'll tell you a story about those jewels that'll floor you. All right, let's have it. And remember, just because I've got them, that doesn't mean I killed Sammy Gates. Where are the rocks now? In my bedroom, under my mattress. I'll get them if you want me to. Yeah, I'll go with you, just to make sure you come back. Okay, copper, come on. And no tricks, sister, no tricks. What? So Otto was telling the truth after all, Nick. I rather thought he was, Patsy. What about Kay Florian? You think she's lying about not killing Gates? I don't know yet. (gasps) At the door to that bedroom. Somebody slammed it shut, Nick. (gasps) Nick, those were gunshots that came from the bedroom. The door's locked. Matty! Matty! Oh, Nick, he doesn't answer. Stand back, Patsy. I'm going to shoot off the lock. That did it. Careful, Nick. It's dark in there. Should be a light switch. Yes, here it is. Oh, Nick. Hey, Maddie. Maddie. Is he? Oh, Nick, he isn't. No, he wasn't shot. He slugged. And the Florian woman got away. That other door there must lead into the kitchen and out the back. Yeah. Maddie, Maddie. Uh, what happened? I don't know, Nick. I came in here. The room was dark. The door slammed shut and then something hit me. Well, what about the shots? Shots? Nick, the jewels. She said they were under the mattress. I wonder if she had time to get them. Well, let's see. I'll lift the mattress. Uh, you see them, Patsy? Yep. You're there here, Nick. She didn't have a chance to take... Oh! What's the matter? Over oh, here. On the other side of the bed. Next to the wall. Great Scott. Kay Florian. And... And she's dead. <laughs> Shock silent, Nick and Patsy stare at the lifeless body of Kay Florian. In just a moment, we'll bring you the conclusion of this adventure. Now for the conclusion of the case of the Graveyard Gunman. Today's adventure with Nick Carter, brought to you by a new post-war Old Dutch cleanser. Although he has finally found the Felix Garth jewels, Nick is still faced with the task of tracking down the murderer of Sammy Gates and Kay Florian. We pick up our story several hours after the Florian woman's death. The door of Nick's office is just opening. Is Mr. Carter in, Miss Bowen? Uh, oh, Mr. Garth. Yes, Nick's in his laboratory. 
Well, he called to tell me that he recovered my jewel. Oh, yes, he has. If you'll wait just a moment, I'll tell him you're here. Uh, thank you, Miss Bowen. Nick, Felix Goss is here. Ah, oh, good. I'll see him right away. Ask him to come in, will you? Right. Mr. Garth, will you step in here, please? Uh, thank you. Hello, Mr. Carter. Good morning, Mr. Garth. Well, here are your long-lost jewels. Oh, Mr. Carter, I... I don't know how to thank you for this. Oh, no, you don't need to. Your insurance company will do that. I believe they're all here, except one of the larger pearls. I have it in this glass. Why? What on earth did you put it in a glass of water for? It isn't water, Mr. Garth. It's a solution of acid. Acid? Yes, acid. You see the pearl? It's just as round and firm as it was when I dropped it in the glass two hours ago. You know what that means, Mr. Garth? Oh, Nick, look out. Stand right where you are, both of you. Don't move. This revolver's loaded, and I have no qualms about killing. We know that, Garth. After what you did to Sammy Gates and Kay Florian... You mean... Nick, is Garth... Yes, he's the murderer, Patsy. And the motive's right here in my hand. The pearl in this glass were genuine. It'd have been dissolved by the acid. But it's a phony... Like all the rest of Felix Garth's jewels. It's very clever of you to discover that, Carter. <laughs> They're the best imitations money could buy. But hardly worth the 50000 you collected from the insurance company after they were stolen. And Nate Benedict stole worthless jewels. He did, but he didn't know it. Oh. No one in the world knew it but you, did they, Garth? You killed Sammy Gates to keep him from finding out, and you killed Kay Florian after she found out. I had no intention of killing either of them, but... But it was the only way you could keep the insurance company from nailing you for fraud. When Gates told you he could find the jewels, you got panicky. So you followed him here. When he caught you spying on him and swung on you, you killed him. And you tried to do the same thing to us out in Wildwood Cemetery. What? You mean it was Garth who took those shots at us, Nick? It was, Patsy. What? He didn't know that Kay Florian had already dug up the jewels because Nate Benedict had tipped her off that he was going to break jail and needed money. She learned they were phony when she tried to sell some of them. You've got all the answers, haven't you, Carter? Most of them. I even know that you went to Kay Florian's house to pay her to keep quiet. You wouldn't have had to kill her if she hadn't been all set to tell us that the jewels were fake. Well, this is all very interesting, Carter, but it's beside the point. When I walk out of here, I'll still be the only one alive who knows the truth. A word of advice, Garth. When you do walk out, don't forget to take the pearl in this glass. You mustn't leave a scrap of evidence. Oh, give me that pearl. I'll be glad to. Here it is. Acid and all, right in the pearl. Oh! oh! And here's something oh. else right now. Oh. Huh. Pick up his gun, Patsy, and keep it on him. Right. I'll call Matty and tell him to get a cell ready for a new tenant with a long-term lease. But, Nick, I still don't see whatever gave you the idea that the jewels were phony. It was the only thing that made sense, Patsy. Huh? I began to suspect it when Kay Florian said she'd tell us a story about them that would floor us. You remember? Yes. But that didn't prove anything. Well, it helped. I'd already eliminated her as a suspect because she wouldn't have shot us out there in the graveyard. She already had the jewels, so why should she? Oh, I see. The person who was doing the shooting didn't know that the jewels had already been taken out of the grave. Exactly. Huh. So that automatically eliminated Otto, too. There was nobody left but Garth who had any interest in the jewels. Uh-huh. He'd been paid off for them, so he wouldn't kill to recover them. Yeah. But I realized that he might kill to keep them from being recovered. Because he wouldn't want the insurance company to know they weren't genuine. But how did he hope to square with the insurance company, even if he did get his hands on them? Oh, that wouldn't have been hard. Garth's made a lot of money since he collected that 50000 He was broke when he sold the real jewels after having them insured. But today, he's rich. Yeah. He figured he'd pay back the insurance company and keep the phonies... And no one would be the wiser. Hmm. Oh, I, I get it all now, Nick. Except one thing. Why wasn't Garth horribly burned when you threw that acid in his face? <laughs> That's easy. It wasn't burned because it wasn't acid. What? No. Nothing but water, Patsy. Water? I didn't need acid to test that pearl. One good look under my microscope was enough. Then why all that business about the pearl being an acid? 
Showmanship, Patsy. Purely showmanship. Oh. When I threw that water in Garth's face, he was so sure it was acid, he raised his hands to his eyes and dropped his gun. Oh, well, for heaven's sake. From the way he howled, I thought sure he'd been burned. I imagine he will be. But I'm satisfied to leave the burning of Felix Garth to the proper authorities. <laughs> Well, Nick, what about next week's adventure? Bob, next week's case... Hmm. I'll get it. Hello? Call Super 2848. That is all. Hey, hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Well, well... Well, Nick, what's the matter? There's a woman, Bob. All she said was, call Super 2848. Why, Nick... That message was on my calendar pad this morning. Look, Nick, this is mighty mysterious, all right, but uh, what about next week's show? Oh, yes, yes. Well, Bob, that's also very mysterious. It's about a man who was killed in Florida and who was also killed 2,000 miles away. Nick Carter, Master Detective, is presented each week at this time by the Cudahy Packing Company. It is produced and directed by Jock McGregor and is copyrighted by Street and Smith Publications Incorporated. Charlotte Manson is featured as Patsy. Matty is played by Ed Latimer. Today's script was written by Ken Pettis and Lou Schofield. Original music is played by Henry Silvern. This program is fictional, and any resemblance to actual persons living or dead is purely coincidental. This is Bob Martin saying, when minutes count, use new post-war Old Dutch cleanser. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.